Let's go. It is March the 24th, 2018. Part of me really wanted to make a video as soon as it happened because that raw emotion, I think, is... I love it when I see raw emotion in other people. And I really wanted to bring that raw emotion, that initial reaction of what I thought when, when the Buccaneers traded for Jason Pierre-Paul. But I really wanted to sit on this and just kind of think about really how I felt as far as how this move affects us and what I think it does for this team, both good and bad. Um, initially, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie, I really wasn't that excited about it. Um, and that's not that I really have a problem with Jason Pierre-Paul, but I just was more concerned thinking about that third round draft pick we gave up initially. After thinking about it and thinking about the fact that you know, what we did with a third round prior, moving up, going to get Robert Aguayo a couple of years ago. I'm like, all right. I guess a lot of times when I'm thinking about these picks, I'm thinking like fourth round when we got Quan Alexander. I think Quan Alexander is one of the most underrated linebackers in the entire NFL. He's one of my favorite players currently in the NFL. And I love Quan Alexander. So when I'm thinking a third round pick, I'm thinking hey, you should be able to get somebody even better than Quan Alexander, right? That doesn't happen too often, especially as a Buccaneer fan. We generally don't see too many guys come off in the second, third, fourth round. I think Quan Alexander was more the exception than the rule. So I got to remember that. And I got to say, all right, Jason Pierre-Paul for a third, we swap fours. I guess I can live with that, especially knowing that we're probably not going to go after a defensive end in the draft now, which I'm perfectly fine with that. I would like to see results this season. I would like to see this team step up this season. I'm not trying to wait two or three years for, you know, a defensive end to develop and become, you know, this amazing pass rusher right before his contract runs up. And then we got to pay him big money. It happens all the time. And I'm not saying that guys don't come out and they don't explode right off, but usually Again, that's the exception more than it is the rule. So not and nothing against any of the guys that are defensive ends or, or defensive tackles or anybody on, on the defensive line that are coming out this year. But I'm just saying I don't foresee anybody coming out and just completely making a difference or not as much of a difference as Jason Pierre Paul will make in his first year with the Bucks is what I should say. Nevertheless, after letting this sit and process I like the move more and more the more that I let it sit in process. I really do. Um, I watch his press conference. I've talked about this before. I'm huge on press conferences. I love watching it. I love watching the body language. I love watching the way that these guys talk. And after listening to him, I really, really enjoyed what he had to say. I enjoyed the way that he just handled himself, the way that he talked. Um, he was very open, very just his body language matched with what he was saying. And I like that. Um, if you guys don't really watch me and on everything that I put out there, I'm big into body language. I am huge into body language. Um, you know, you think body language, it, it's, you know, I think they say it's like 80% of communication is nonverbal. That's why I'm so big into body language. And so when I watch sports, when I watch players from my teams and their press conferences that's a lot of times what I'm paying attention to not just the words because the words can be robotic and very politically correct and you know say the right things but but if the words match the body language it's a big deal to me and I felt like his did and I really enjoyed his press conference with Jason Light the other day it was uh it was pretty good um again you can't always judge everything some of these guys they've become very good at this um so it is what it is um but I am, I am happy. And then, of course, the news comes out about Michael Bennett and this issue with him supposedly pushing this lady. I don't know. You know, that's two years ago. But I've heard other people, RTP talked about it, uh, us possibly dodging a bullet here by not getting him because I certainly wouldn't have had a problem with the Bucks getting him. But when I think about what we gave up for Jason Pierre-Paul versus what we would have given up for Bennett, I don't know that it's that much of a difference. I think we got more value with, with Jason Pierre-Paul. And honestly, I think he's going to be less of a distraction in the locker room. I'm just saying. And I don't really have a problem with Bennett, but I'm just saying it is what it is. So 
that's kind of how I feel. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, yeah, our defensive line with the moves that we made, bringing in the guys that we brought in on top of bringing in Jason Pierre-Paul, that this is now going to be this great defensive line because I'd like to see Gerald McCoy go an entire season without getting hurt or playing hurt. I'd like to see the defense stay healthy. I'd like to see what we do at safety because right now it's projected, you know, Chris Conte is going to be, you know, back there. And, and I don't have a problem with Chris Conte, but I'd really like to see, you know, somebody back there. I personally, I like Keith Tandy a lot. I, 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 I don't know why, because this guy, every time I see him play, this guy is legit. He's always making plays. But yet, for some reason, year after year, he just keeps getting shuffled back, and I, I don't get it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the coaches see that I don't see. But when I see him on the field, the dude performs. Again, it is what it is. I'm not a coach. I'm not going to pretend that I know as much as them, but I do question why this guy isn't on the field. So I don't know. Maybe they go Derwin James. Maybe they go the dude from Alabama at safety with this seventh-round pick, or seventh-round, with the number seven pick. Um but we'll just have to wait and see. I I don't foresee them trading up to get a running back. Uh, the kid from Penn State, I don't see that happening, especially with you giving away your third. Like, we don't have enough ammunition right now. Um, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But nevertheless, that's just kind of how I feel about this move. Um, do I think it's a good pickup? Yeah. What is it going to do for us next year? I don't know. I really don't. Um in the past, I may have gotten either way more excited or way more down on this move than I am right now, but I've just kind of learned with the Bucks that it's just one of those things where, hey, look, I, I'm, I'm a huge Winston fan, and I thought by now he would have done taking us to the promised land. That's that's how I see my team with rose-colored glasses. So, you know, it is what it is. It's probably why I don't bet or gamble when it comes to the Bucks specifically. Never have, never will, because... I, I see them with clouded vision like I see my kids. You know what I mean? Like, they can do no wrong. I shouldn't say that. Not during the season. They really upset me sometimes. But during the off season, I'm thinking, yeah, this is our year. This is our year. Yada, yada, yada. That's what I mean by that. So, nevertheless, uh, that's about all I got on that. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is a good move? Um, we'll see. Only time will tell. We'll see what 2018 brings. Um how this defensive line, I think I think a lot of it's just going to be, can we stay healthy? So I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm always going to trust the process. I'll talk to you all later. I am out.